personal injury law firm, Keith and Scott, are third-generation Trantolos. Trantolos been giving you some great service for 85 years in Connecticut. Uh, what's your favorite thing about opening day? Well, as a Cubs fan, it's the optimism and the hope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. We're all in first place. Exactly. Like, there is this feeling of, you know, and again, my team won. I'm undefeated right now. Like, can't believe it. Um, but, yeah, there's just a there's a feeling that everybody is equal right now and anything can still happen despite what moves you did beforehand. But, like, emotionally, that's what I feel. Physically, it's the smell of the sausage and peppers. When you're walking a street and you smell that right. sausage and peppers and everyone else is like going to the same place. We're all going to this house over here. And on the way, there's all these guys that are selling us beer and sausage and peppers. And when you just have that smell on that walk and you've got like whatever kind of uh, sausage grease that drips from your hand because you're walking, you're eating the whole time, and like you gotta get all the peppers and onions because that probably costs like thirteen bucks. You don't want to like drop an onion. That's like a seventy five cent onion. So you gotta get all that on your face, and then you're just a mess when you walk into the ballpark and you smell now like sausage and peppers. I honestly would like a cologne that smelled like sausage and peppers, and I'd wear it every. What about a candle? Game. A candle? You know, That's you a great Gwyneth idea. Paltrow, yeah. You know, it smells like her private parts. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you might as well have something that smells like sausage and peppers. I agree. I think MLB, Maybe some onions. MLB could uh, Absolutely. Put, put a stamp on that. The MLB candle. Mm-hmm. Sausage See, we're helping Rod Manfred all the time. Maybe some grass that smell like uh, some freshly cut grass. Uh, the other thing that I really like, and I think a lot of people agree with this, is the first, before you get to the, or right when you get to the ballpark, before the first inning, when they water off the field, you watch that guy water off the field, and that's satisfying. Hey, he's he's tamping down the dust. And then like that's you, what he's doing. You just see how he gets like the whole field, and then like he's an expert waterer. Is what everybody's watching him. It's just I don't know. It's just this you know first field water satisfaction. It didn't happen for me that way because no? we had turf. Yeah, so there's feel for you. They were watering the little spots of dirt. First base, second base, the mound, and around home. Plate. I like that as well. Like, oh, man, he's going over to first. He got it all with like one shot. Oh, you missed a little spot. You got it over there. And like, he doesn't know you're watching. Everybody's watching him, though. It's like the Zamboni. It's like the Zamboni. For me, it was my second year because I got called up in 88. And in 89, when I made the team, and I walked into that locker room and my jersey was in the locker. That's cool. It, that was the coolest moment that, as an athlete, I've ever had because I, I really felt like I belonged and that I'd accomplished um, more than enough in, in my baseball career. The making it was, was honestly easier than staying. The staying was the harder part for me. I always thought they're going to push you up there. They're going to see if you could play the longer you stick. And then then when they were going to trade me to the Phillies during the 88 season, I thought, okay, I'm going to get a shot with the Phillies here. I really got to be ready to go when I get that shot. So when I when I got recalled by the Reds, got called up because of Ron Robinson's injury, then I was like, okay, now my hair's on fire. Every time I go out there, I'm going to show these people. Because when I got there, Pete Rose was like, listen, you're only here for a couple weeks because – and and Ron Robinson's nickname was Robbie out of Robinson. So they were like, listen, Robbie's got a bad elbow right now. He'll be back in two weeks, and you'll probably have to go back to Nashville, and then we'll probably trade you. That's that's what my first meeting in the big leagues was. So it wasn't just, hey, you got called up. It was, hey, you got called up, but you're just here uh, to, to fill you know a spot here for, until this other guy comes back. I was like, you're not sending me back. When you saw that jersey, was it the thought of, I'm not a need, I'm a want? Oh, yeah. I mean, that because in that off season they had traded uh, Frank Williams and Rod, Rob Murphy. They both got traded. So I knew I'm the setup guy. That's Pete had told me when we left spring training, you're the guy. And trust me, 89 was an awful spring training for me. I got lit up, you know, and chewed up, and it was awful. And I had to kind of, you know, go backward in time and start over with two weeks to go in spring training and got my stuff together, thankfully. Um, by, and then 89 was one of my best years. Um, but when I got there and I looked at that locker, and then, you know, and I'm looking at, you know, the the – Eric Davis is there, and Barry Larkin, and uh, you're you're looking at Paul O'Neill, and all of these guys, Cal Daniels, guys that I'd come up in the minor leagues with. I was like, I, you know what, I I can play here, I belong here, 
I had already spent two winters in Puerto Rico and dominated down there, made all star teams. So I was like, listen, I just I I can't be the weak link. So that was my mentality. Every time I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna press, but I'm gonna press hard enough to where I don't break. I'm gonna bend. And, you know, again, I, I, I felt like in 89, I ended up setting up Franco for 39 saves. He made the all-star team. They ended up trading him. And then the next year, obviously, we win the World Series. But 88 to 89 was a transition from I was, I was just holding on, hoping I would make it, to 89 was now I have to establish myself. And, you know, I did some stuff. I started some fights. Um, and established a reputation of I'm not going to take anybody's crap and I'm going to protect my players. And then Pete Rose got suspended. That was that was just an unbelievable year. But when you first walk in that locker room and then the parade came around with all the animals from the zoo and the fans were so unbelievably electric, I was like, I want to do this every year. I don't, I don't want to get sent back. I don't ever want to go back. I, I want to be here every year. So I think every player's goal is to play well enough to make that opening day roster every year and and just to be coming back as much as possible. All right, I don't hate to put these thoughts in your mind, but 98, 99, 2000 opening days, like when you're first out of the league and you're seeing those opening days for the league, what were those thoughts like for you? Um, it was a tough transition. I, I mean, I'd already gotten into radio and television. Um, I, I, I didn't think... You know, because 98, I went back with the Padres. Right. So 96, I, w- I went with the Cubs, was beat up really bad. It had gone through two major surgeries, and I was like, listen, I don't have anything left. And the Cubs were trying to talk me out of it. And so eventually, Jim Riggleman was the manager. I was like, listen, I got to go. And he's like, no, you can't leave. You're still throwing 95 miles an hour. You can't just quit. I'm like, I'm not quitting. I'm retiring. I said, I, I can do other things. I'm 31 years old, I, I, but I can't do this. And I certainly don't want to go under the knife again, and that's where I was headed. Um, so when I took the time off, got into radio and television, um, and, and knew by 98, you know, I can do something else. But I had a two-year contract with Fox when I was let go. I was like, all right, I'll give it one more shot. So I took six months, totally got myself together, was thrown in the mid-90s, um, the Padres gave me a contract to come to spring training after about my sixth or seventh outing. I could not lift my arm and I knew it was done. So 98, it was tough spring training, 99, 2000. It was difficult, but I, I was at peace with it because after 96, then 98, I knew those spring trainings. I had done everything. I could. Now remember 96, I spent the whole year with the Marlins, right? So I traveled with the Marlins. I, I rehabbed with the Marlins. And when Andrews at the end of that year said, listen, the only thing we can do is split you open again and tighten everything up again. Like they did to oral Hersheiser, who never really pitched well again. I was like, I can't, I just can't. And so when I rehabbed, I really thought I had a shot because I hadn't gone under the knife a third time. That was a mistake on my part. I, I really, you know, I'll kick my coverage right there and should have quit after 96. Yeah, but still, like, you know, seeing the opening days in 99 and everyone's roster and everybody running out there, you know, for any athlete, when, when you're just not a part of that, it's a it's a difficult bridge to go Here's to the, the fan thing, side. 99, I was. I was at opening day. Um, 97, I was at opening day working for the MLB channel. And uh, then I was working for ESPN. So I was at opening day. I was at Yankee Stadium. And it, it sucked. But I had a job to do. Now right. I was in radio. Um, then in 2000, I think I was doing television by that point in Baseball Tonight. So When did you, know, you get over it? When did you experience I'll never get like, over it. Well, um, it's not like today you wanted to go out there. Actually, you probably did want to Grande, close you know, for Hunter Airplane, Green. You, know, you never get over it. Um, <laughs> no, but when was it like I can officially enjoy it as a fan, as a, as a spectator? And this game I'll is never theirs. enjoy baseball as a fan. You can ask my wife. I will never, I can never sit in the stands. I can't, I can't, it's hard to watch because I watch it as a player. Yeah. I still am nitpicking stuff because I'm still coaching. So I'm always like, even when I'm telling you guys, I'm like, this is, this is bad baseball. Right. You know, not being able to hit the cutoff guy, not being able to, uh, you know, do certain things on a baseball field. It, it annoys me because I was, I was properly trained. So it's, you know, even though we have the pitch clock and we got the new rules and stuff like that, it's still sloppy. There's still a lot of sloppiness. So, yeah, it, it affects me because I don't want people to think that's the way the game should be played. Right. 
Kurt, what about you, ultimate fan? I mean, I know you coming in just a little bit like me, and I know that your team hasn't won yet, and my team's never lost in 2023. I'm a Cubs fan. He's a Boston Red Sox fan. But for you on opening days, what's kind of the vibe for a Kurt? Well, I never got to go to one. I was always burning up days to go work for NASCAR. Yeah, send you to yeah one. but still, like today, like what is the feeling when you when you? Start? I had optimism, and then uh, <laughs> got know. all shot to hell. Ten with nine, your and then Kluber gave up a oh, bunch. Man. <laughs> okay, you knew Kluber was going to give up a bunch. Here's the thing about your team: your starters aren't great. Your bullpen has to be great. Yeah. Okay, that's you know Kenley Jansen. Someone's got to be a bridge to get him in a game, and that's that's going to be your game plan this year. Um, the, the problem is, I, I just don't think Heim Bloom was allowed to do enough. I mean, there's some good names no, on their team. They still spent a lot, but they but they still have a ceiling on that's what, right. on their exactly. no, there's They've a, got a there's number a cap, in mind. Have, there's a cap on what we're going to do, and it's not going to be insane like the Red Sox or the Mets. It's not going to be insane like the Yankees or the Dodgers. So that that's where you're stifled a little bit. You brought back some of the same bad bullpen guys from last year. Yeah. I think Kenley's an improvement, but some of the other guy, Brazier, some of those other dudes. Brazier never looked like that guy to me. You know, he three years ago, like, he was throwing 98. Today, he was topping at 93. He always That's looks a big so difference. annoyed. <laughs> He's always annoyed. I'm so such a rube. I'm so blind. Like, <laughs> But let's go back to the – here's the thing that I did like and even still do. I love the kids. I love the kids when the parents are bringing the kids, and they're like, for the first time. And I'm sure you can remember when your oh, dad yeah. brought you. Oh, yeah. And, you know, opening day is is such a spectacle that really baseball is secondary. You know, you're, now you're seeing a whole stadium feel. And that's Great the point. way it's us. So when you it's and I Americana. are constantly going, Right, it is. And yeah. there's a lot of patriotism. And then it kind of falls off because now you got to go back to school. Everybody's going back to work. The weekday games are a grind. And that's why businessman specials. And this is what we talk about with the yard goes that they do such great. Give the damn tickets away. Just give them away. Fill the stadium yeah. so it has the feel of opening day 81 times. And then when you do make the postseason, then it's that, oh, my God, we all got to go to the game again because we might win a championship. That that feeling should not be 20 times a year, 30 times a year. Like, here's the thing about the Red Sox fans and Cubs fans. You guys have spoiled your teams. Exactly. By, by selling out for yeah. so many years and even, you know, 86 years and 108 years in between championships. I always knew the greatest fans were your fans because you, you put – like every guy I ever interviewed from the Red Sox before they won in 04, um, oh my God, every 81 games, it's like a playoff atmosphere. You did that. Your fans did that. Your fans did that. You gave them. Every time I played at Wrigley, the, it's my favorite road place. You know why? Sold out. Two o'clock in the afternoon. Damn. There's 45,000 knuckleheads here right. drinking old style uh-huh. and loving baseball. How could you not like that? Well, that's what I was going to say with Kurt is I'm such a rube. Oh, my I'm God. Henry's a Mets it. fan, and he's he's PO'd right now because it's 3-3. <laughs> oh, no. Scherzer just Don't got Scherzer. Don't waste a Scherzer start. Ugh. But just me being a Cubs fan, like, I know that they spent money on Dansby. Yep. Um, I'm a Saya fan. I'm a Stroman fan big time. I yep. still love my Hendricks. And, but I just I feel like the writing was on the wall a month ago that they're not trying. But they just beat the competition. And I'm the so Brewers pumped. are where you think the bar is. <laughs> and I'm the ready. Cardinals. That's right. And now you got me for the year. I love that you hate the Brewers more than you hate the Cardinals now. Uh, Brewers can. <laughs> Cardinals, I wait till everyone gets a load of Jordan Walker this year. Like, people are going to be jealous of what the Cardinals have, and they don't even know it yet. They got a bunch of good. Big, big player, man. Those are those are some corn-fed boys right there. We have seen the two sides of the coin when it comes to like monsters. We are looking at a couple of monsters today. You already brought up Vogelbach from the Mets. <laughs> and then we're seeing some really short. Oh dudes my too. goodness, Cedric Mullins Cedric lost Mullins a couple inches. <laughs> Cedric lost a few inches in the WBC. Wow. And then my guy, Kayshawn Collier, we saw from the Cubs, oh God, five dude. nothing, which yeah. is probably a stretch. He might be four something. But there are some short stacks that are going to win but the stolen here's, base here's battle. The beautiful, here's the beautiful thing in baseball. You could be five foot tall. You could be as big as Vogelbach. Yeah. You could be six foot seven like Judge. Um, you know, you, you, you can become a baseball There's player. There's a place for you out there. There's a place for everybody. There really is. And, uh, you know, you're saying Alcantara is not six five, he's six seven. Dude. I believe that too. Because I like the way you think. If we tell everybody he's shorter than he really is, yeah. when he actually is out there six seven. On 10 inches. He'll scare you. He's going to scare the, the bejesus out of everybody.
Yeah, there's some games. Did he get out? He, get he out got out of it. But look at that. Six runs on seven hits. A lot of action. Not really. I like watching Scherzer. I think that would be a great opening day. Um, we haven't well, broken you're, this. Well, you're looking at two Cy Young Award winners exactly. right there. That would facing be, off. And not many. That's the other thing. You brought up uh, full ballparks. Miami's packed. Miami Because is packed. they have hope. Opening day, they have hope. Right. And for a couple of weeks, they'll probably have hope. Um, I think this is a really damn good young team. That every time they get right to the cusp of being a championship level team, ah, let's trade a bunch of our players. Fire sale. Yeah. And that's what I think Jeter left. I think Jeter was like, I, I ha- I'll have none of this because we've had way too much talent here. If we had kept it together, we'd probably be competing with the Phillies and the Braves. Braves have an unbelievable roster of young, great players. So they've locked them in. All right, that's going to do it. When we come back, we'll talk some more baseball. We'll update that Red Sox game, see how that ended. Mets right now, they're, it's brand new baseball right now after six innings in Miami. Scherzer may not come back out for the seventh. When we come back. Told you, though, don't sleep on the Orioles this year. I got to tell you where Cohen is right now. When we come back, I got to tell you. You won't believe it. You will believe it, actually. I love Steve Cohen. Great for baseball. All right, we'll be back. It is opening day here on the Rob Dibble Show. We are following a Yankee win, so really the post game to a Yankee game. Broadcast.